Thank you so much for coming here today and sharing your experience with poaching. Thank to you. be honest, I've always thought poaching as a very black and white activity, and I thought your talk really showed us the other side to the story. Um, but what would, you, what would your key take home message be for people who watch your talk today? My, my key take home, I think, is that we need to recognize the humanity of these people, even though they're doing terrible things, that these are human beings and their actions don't come out of nowhere. And that until we address poverty outside the gates of these wildlife conservancies, there will always be another person willing to take a shot. So we, we need to recognize their humanity and help them if we also want to help the animals. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yeah, and I also feel like poaching can be a very specific topic. I mean, I, I don't think many people automatically think about it. And I noticed in your talk you spoke about um, exploring those topics like gentrification. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm sure people might be curious, like what is your artistic thought process in choosing these topics? Like when you go through these things, how did you decide, yes, I'll go to Africa and look at poaching and see if there's another side to this? It's a great question. I, I actually had no, I had never thought that I would go to Africa and make a film about wildlife because, you know, it wasn't really my area. But then I read a story about a poacher who had had a change of heart because his life was unstable mm -hmm. and he had become a ranger and that he actually turned out to be one of the best deterrents against poaching because he knew all the tricks of the poachers. And I thought, well, that's it's an interesting story. Is that a is that a redemption story? Is he really has he really changed, or is it just simply you know a cynical you know money grab? And it got me really thinking, and so I started doing some research to try and find out more about poachers. And what I found was that the information was non-existent, and it was mostly presuppositions. It was just mm -hmm. these people are evil, they're terrible. Don't they know they're doing terrible things? And whenever I see a question that I feel isn't really being addressed that's when I start getting interested. Mm -hmm. So same with gentrification. You know, you, you see a lot of information about gentrification. Is it a good thing? Is it a bad thing? You see people passionate about both sides. And whenever that happens, it, get, it gets me interested in the topic. Hmm. Any other topics that are kind of circling in your mind after this? Yeah, I'm actually, one of the ones that I want to do, and it's in a story that I discovered when I was in Kenya, is about refugee camps which simultaneously are providing you know, stability and medical treatment and food and even education mm -hmm. for refugees. But at the same time, we're, I mean, these people are not in their homes. They're, mm -hmm. they're expatriated. And refugee camps are no, are no picnic. I mean, there's a lot of terrible things that happen there too. So I'm starting to get interested in that question. You know, how, and refugees are obviously a very timely issue as well. Right. Yeah, and I remember a statistic I read, like some people can stay in a refugee camp for 10, 15 years even. More. There's yeah, a, even the more. camp that I'm interested in is called Vidab, and it yeah. is the oldest refugee camp, and it's, it was started in the 90s. Its population is roughly 350,000, and there are people, it's a Somali refugee camp, and there are people who not only have been born there, but their parents were born there. Wow. So second, Multi third generation, yeah. they've never set foot in Somalia. Oh my gosh. Yeah, so that's an area that interests me. Is, I mean, obviously that's something we want to avoid, so I'm, I'm interested in exploring that topic. So where can we go and find your films? Like, I'm interested <laughs> in watching all it's the other uh, movies that you've made. Yeah, no, I mean, this, this film, um, Poacher, is going around film festivals right now, okay. so it's hitting the festival circuit, and it will be online, and I hope people will come and check it out. Cool. And I wanted to pick your brain about this, too, because um, I found just watching your TED Talk to be very powerful and inspire me to be a little bit more critical when I look at donating money to um, nature conservatives and try to see, okay, sh we should I should probably put my money towards a nonprofit that's also supporting the community. Have mm -hmm. you thought about partnering not with nonprofits or, yes. or the, what the next steps are once you launch a film? Absolutely. I want, um, what I would really like to do is use this film to help um, not profits that, that sort of align with this message as a, as a fundraising tool, as an awareness tool, mm -hmm. so that people can, can find out where they should give their money to make a more effective, in what I would consider to be a more effective use of their money. So um, that's, that's definitely, 
I've gotten very, in, you know, I, I, in my talk I talk about being interested in humanity, mm -hmm. but this film has really gotten me very interested in wildlife causes as well. Mm. And I'm, I'm, I've gotten very passionate through the process of making this film. Wow. I can talk all day, but I probably have to let yes. you go. Fair enough. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you. Thanks.